Hey everybody, Rebels of Cloud9 here, and today I'm going to be building a cool kit. This is a company I've never heard of until I saw the box. This is from Marivox Models. This is a 70 second scale J22 fighter um, built by Saab originally during World War II. And basically Sweden needed a fighter, and they couldn't get any from anybody else really. I think they said they were trying to get some from Britain. And they couldn't get them across, so they decided to build their own in 1943. These guys came out, and um, yeah, it was a successful fighter for the most part. Um, wasn't typically too superior to anything else really at the time. And um, they've actually got three of these left. And one is, I think it's taxi condition, and they're restoring it to flight condition. Um, it was basically a frame, a uh, tubular frame on the inside and the wings, and then everything else was uh, plywood. Pretty interesting, huh? So, a um, bit interesting is I originally found this, I was searching for a model, um, and I was I, I found it and I looked through the rest of their kits that they had on eBay and I found this one and I was like oh this is really cool so I sent it to Rob at Basic Modeling because he's Swedish and he collects a lot of Swedish stuff and I'd never seen this one before and I thought hey Rob check this plane out this is pretty cool uh, I don't know if you've seen this one before and I think he had three so he's definitely seen it and he just finished two of them so I decided yeah I'm gonna buy one and build it for myself since he's not gonna get it I'm going to and I'm really really glad I did because again I just I really like the look of this plane um, what's kind of cool is you get five options and I wish I had more of these because all the options are great I'm gonna build this one on the box art but um, I've also got this one here it's just another nice looking one here this one here, the yellow spinner, and it's got the uh, some nice nose art there. Um, this one here, red spinner, again, nice nose art. And I really like this one. This is probably what I would be building um, with these white stripes down the fuselage and the wing there. It just looks great. It's a fantastic looking oddball. So, let's open this up. And here we have some it's pretty nice gray styrene. Um, details aren't too pronounced on there. I'm going to rescribe all of these because it's not going to take me that long to do. Um, so I'm going to spend a long time rescribing them. You can see there it's, again, it's not bad, but it's like going to be a bit more dominant. Um, there's some flash, but it's not terrible or really boating or anything like that. It looks pretty good. So the plane's pretty small. It's not a very big fighter. Um, here we have the bottom wings. Comes in one section. What I find really interesting is the landing gear retracted into the fuselage like that. Like it folded backwards. It's a pretty interesting design. Got a bit of an engine there. Uh, cowling looks great. There's nothing really wrong with it as far as I can tell. A little clean up here and there, but that's normal. Um, so yeah, that looks all looks pretty good. Um, this is the one I was just recently looking at. This is the stencil guide. This is what I'm going to use um, for uh, all the scribing lines and stuff like that, so I know where to go. Uh, I'm missing a piece here. There it is. Forgot about one. Canopy. Canopy is not the best. Um, yeah, it's got some nice raised panels on there, so I'll be able to mask it, but it's a bit crazed. Um, yeah, take me a little bit of work. It's not bad, but whatever. I'm okay with it. Um, yeah, top and bottom, so this is perfect for me. And here's the front. This is if you want to have it posed open, which... It's quite thick, so I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Um, here we have the instructions. The instructions are very simple. Very, very straightforward build. Nothing too, again, nothing too complicated. So you get the JA, or J22A and the 
J22B and the difference between the A and the B is the number of uh, cannons on the wings. So pay attention to that when you're building it. So we also get some photo etched metal. Uh, I'm not going to be using much of this stuff. I just, since you can't see any of this interior detail really, I'm, I'm not worried about it at all. I'd like to save it for other projects and stuff. Um, like these are the, these are for the side walls here. There's the instrument panel, um, seat belts and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm not going to use a lot of these things. Uh, I am going to use, these are the cowl flaps here. I'm not going to use that one. These are the scissors for the landing braces. Uh, this is the antenna and these are the doors, um, for the landing gear. So I'm going to use stuff like that. Mine are quite corroded over. I've got some bit of corrosion on them. But I'm sure a little bit of primer and those will be fine. Not worried about those at all. Um, so yeah, here's the instructions for the etched parts. There's quite a bit here. It's pretty good stuff. Fairly simple. It's not, it's not complicated metal. It's a bit small, so if you're worried about it, yeah, just just the size of it is might be a little troublesome, but not bad. Now, this is the part of the model that does worry me a bit, is these decals. They are beautiful. They look fantastic. You've got all this great little detail in them there, the little Woody Woodpecker. There's a little crow with a gun. And where's that other one there? A little bee. <laughs> Cute. Um, Rob did say that these are not quite the best. You gotta handle them with a bit of care. Um, they're very thin and they cracked on him. So I'm a little worried about these. Uh, I'm gonna have to be as careful as I can with them. These are made by Tecmod decals. I've never used them. I've only seen them being used by other people. So yeah, fingers crossed, but they look fantastic. They look absolutely brilliant. So all that being said, guys, I'm going to go and spend some time here now, and I'm going to scribe the model, and get to work after that. Then we're going to start building, so I'll be back after everything's been scribed up here. So, um, yeah, I, I scribed everything, and now it was time to make all the little, well, they're not rivets, but rivet bolt details, whatever. All these little holes in here I needed to make, and so I put my um, tiniest drill bit in here and I started drilling out little holes. I just basically go one, two, three, done. Not very deep. Um, and they didn't work out that well. They were, they were quite big. Um, now, usually a lot of people use, um, oh shoot, I just forgot what they're called. It's basically a wheel with a gear and it's got all these like, it's like a spiked gear and it's on a roller and you just go make these lines with it. It's quite a cool little device and I've been meaning to buy one and I can't remember why I was going to get one, but I never did. Um, so I had to come up with an alternative solution. So here's, here's my little bit of uh, detailing here. It's not too bad. I think it passes. It's passable. So I've done two things. Number one, I put a pin in my, um, sorry, a sewing needle in my pin vise. That's the first one. Next one I have is my compass. And so I'm just going to show you, like, where's a good place for me to do this? Yeah, I'll do it right here. Right here in the tail section. So. All I'm going to do is just take my um, needle like this and I just push it in. Move on to the next spot. Push it in. And so this is how I've been slowly making all these little rivets and then if they're not big enough I just grab my regular needle and there we go deeper so uh, what's nice about this is the plastic 
it's, it's soft, which works really well for scribing and stuff like that. I don't really like soft plastic as much, but in, in this case, it's been a huge, huge benefit for me. So, I'm going to keep going on and doing the rest of this. This requires me to be very, very, very close in doing all this stuff. Um, got to do the cowling here. That's going to take me a little while to do that one. That's what, that one's not going to be too bad. Uh, the one that I am worried about a bit is this. I'd like to do these, all these little dots here. Oh, so many. Oh, well. It'll look good when, when it's done, I hope. And, um... I already tested it out with the panel line. I just went over it with my panel line wash and pfft, you could just see them all. It looks really great. But I am going to go buy one of those, um, yeah, those little wheels because I'm not going to do something like this again. This is a lot of work. And again, it looks great, but I'd like to have something a bit simpler to, to use instead of, um, you know, using my compass and a, and a needle. So I'm going to go finish doing that. That's going to take me a little while to do. It's not going to be a terribly long process. Uh, and then, excitingly enough, I get to uh, start building. It's done. I finished scribing everything and I'm so happy and it's making all the little pins is, is done. And you know, you can see it on the wing, hopefully. Let me try. Ah, there's my problem. Um, so yeah, there's all the rivets on here. Don't know how well these are showing up. Come on. Quit focusing on the background. Focus on the foreground. There you go. So there they are, all, are, all these little rivet details. And I wrote to Rob asking him about like whether or not these were visible on the, on the aircraft. And he basically said the same thing that I, I kind of concluded that because it's wood, you wouldn't really see them. But... It's nice detail, you know, that's what we kind of both said. It, it just, it would look nice, but it's not, you know, necessary type of thing. Um, <laughs> look, at, look at all that straining on there. So anyways, this is kind of cool, because now I get to actually finally start building this plane and painting it and everything. And I can't believe I'm at this, this stage now, because <laughs> of how much work I was doing on this. I think it looks pretty good. I can't wait to see that painted and done up here. So, step one. Interior green. Black, black, interior green. Cool. Okay. So let's fold this. There's the etch stuff. And these stencil instructions are beautiful. I love this. It's just perfect rendition of it. Nice and big, too. So that needs to be green. Where's my interior green? Got it. Cockpit green. And we're going to build this seat first. And all that. I'm going to grab a new tissue to use for those. So, yeah, I'm just so thrilled to at last be done all that. I can't get my sprue cutters in there. There we go. The tight gap there. Cool. So, like I mentioned before, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of soft plastic as much. I, I much prefer harder plastics, but... Um, yeah, in the case of this build, um, for doing all that scribing stuff, that was very, very helpful. And I did appreciate it very much in the end. So, and as I also mentioned, and I'm not going to do the interior, um, I'd like to save those for a model where I'm going to actually have that all um, visible and stuff like that you know, open cockpit. And I've got a I've got another model where it has very similar um style or I could easily just swap them in there. So come on. See there. 
great. Looks pretty good. So then this will fit on there or in there? On there. So it fits on top here. Yeah, looks much better. Okay, and we need the control stick. Uh, which is really a funny looking part. Uh, I gotta say, let me show you. It's, look, look at this. Like, look how big it is. It's huge. Like, you could take it off and beat people with it if you needed to. Resist capture or something. And, yeah, so, like I mentioned, I'm not going to use basically any of the etched stuff. That includes the dash, because I actually don't think the dash for this one's too bad, that you need a, um, an etched one. I'm just going to cut that off. Seems to be reacting very well to the Tamiya glue, which is always a good sign, for me at least, because the one Pegasus hobby kit I just did, I'm still working on it, but <laughs> yeah, that did not work with Tamiya glue. I had to switch and use Humbra, which you'll find out about in a little while. Okay, I'm just curious. Before I end this little segment here, there's a good thought here. He'll do. Actually, he'll do better. Ah, oh, pretty snug. Interesting. I just thought. I just thought maybe it doesn't quite fit as well. Like, I was just wondering, how, how well does a pilot fit in here? I'm not going to put him in, but I was just curious. He fits really well. Yeah. Pilot would look really nice in here. But, again, I don't... I'm not a big fan of pilots. I don't know why. Don't... Don't judge me. Don't. Oops. I forgot one. Forgot a stabilizer. Oh, well. That'll take a few seconds to clean up. So... And now it's to paint everything. And I'm just going to hand paint some interior cockpit green. This is XF71. You guys have seen me use this uh, many, 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 many times, so it's nothing too, too new. Um, what am I looking for with this? And yeah, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just going to paint everything on the interior here. And. Um, yeah, when I'm done with that, this is nicely dried out, I'll uh, be back. I think the next step, after I get all this done here, because again, I'm not adding in the etch stuff, is the, um, yeah, putting the halves together. Cool. So yeah, I'm really excited because I'm working on this kit finally. <laughs> after all that scribing and you have to putty it and then you have to... Well, you're filling in all the seams and everything like that, the, the little mistakes that you made, and you have to just, it's, it's such a, it's such a laborious process. Like, it's its really worthwhile in the end, um, sometimes, actually, but it does take a lot out of you. It takes a lot out of me, so it's not, it's not one of those things I necessarily like to go to, but I love, I love recessed panel lines. I love doing, um panel line washes and stuff and you know, some people are kind of like why do you care I just I like it it's not accurate I don't care I, I again I just I like it I find it fun I think it's a nice look accuracy eh 50-50 on it anyways I'll be back once this is all done it's looking pretty good so far so, you, you, you know, this is, like, way too big of a control column there, right? It's this big block. I was reading a forum, and someone called it a sledgehammer, and it got me thinking, this isn't a sledgehammer. 
This is a Swedish aircraft designed by a Swedish model company. This is Mjolnir. This is this is Thor's hammer. So it's like a good luck charm inside of the plane. It's very clever. Quite impressed. So anyways, I'm just going to paint this black. Um, quite an interesting cockpit. I was able to find a few pretty good pictures of it. It'd be nice, like, like this cockpit here. It's, um... It, it's, it's, it doesn't have all the detail, but it has like quite a bit of it. But, um, I was surprised how kind of complicated and, and, um, uh, busy it is in, in the, in the real thing. It's got a lot of little dials and details and levers and it's just quite busy. Busier than I thought. Um, so one thing I wanted to show is this. This is the instrument panel, so you can see here, I painted it silver. This is just um, flat aluminum, nothing fancy about it. But what I'm going to do with it here is I just wanted to paint all the dials, and then I'm going around and painting the um, just the regular flat black on it. So this is taking me longer because I'm, I'm doing it on camera, but, and I'm trying to really focus instead of yapping away as usual. It's looking pretty good though. I know there's those of you who are saying. Why don't you just paint it silver and then paint the etched part uh, black and then put it on top of the other one and then you're laughing. Uh, this isn't too bad. They're quite... They're quite sunken in there, so... This isn't going to take me a terribly long time, but... just wanted to show this quick... Er... Way of uh, painting up all these... All these dials. It's looking pretty good, actually. As far as I'm concerned. Whoops. Bit too much. No, that's still too much. So yeah, there. It's gonna take me like I said, it's gonna take me just a little while, but once that's done, I'll put everything in and be ready to go. So, yeah, that looks looks quite nice. See a little spot I missed right there. That's better. So, I'll be back. All right, guys. I actually just went and watched Rob's video um, of this again today or yesterday. I can't remember. Um, but one of the things I noticed in there is he also had troubles with some fit issues. He didn't quite mention it, but I could, from building the model, I could definitely see a couple areas that I went, ah, I'm not the only one that's having a little difficulty with this thing. Um, so I'm glad about that. So now I know half of it isn't me, which is something I suspected a while ago. But anyways, I got the wheel here glued onto the tail it does not fit at all there's supposed to be like a little peg in the back and um it, there isn't one so i just yeah, i just glued it on there let it dry all day um and then yeah you can see i glued the uh, canopy on there mask that all over that was quite easy to mask um so i'm very happy with that um and then there's this mask here for the antenna and this is supposed to fit at a uh, here and there's a little photo etched piece that goes on there. So you bend the photo etch into basically a V shape. I'm going to try to uh, super glue this. Just very, very little should work enough without crazing the canopy. If it does craze, yeah, I'm just going to kick myself. Um, 
Because I don't have, there, there's nothing spare to test it on. That's the worst part. Like, usually I use, like, a spare sprue. But it was literally just this in the box. So, um, yeah, cross my fingers there. Um, what I'm going to do next is the landing gear braces, the struts, and all that jazz. And that's going to take me a little while to do them. I'm not going to record them because I have a feeling they're going to be kind of fussy. They come in three parts. You got the front, there's one here in the back, and are they on here? Yeah, they're there, down here. These ones go kind of in the middle. And I am just worried a little bit that I'm going to have a bit of issue with them. So I'm going to do that off camera here. And then you also have the doors. You can use these plastic ones, or you can use the metal ones. Where are they? Here. So I think I'm going to use... I think I'm going to use these ones, because I, I like them uh, actually quite a bit more, how nice they look. Um, they do need to be rounded a bit, but I think I can do that. Um, yeah, that's about it for right now. I was hoping I was going to be able to paint this thing today, but life just got in the way and I wasn't able. It's it's evening right now, so I, I'm just not able to do it, unfortunately, but whatever. i still got plenty of time to do it. Um, oh yeah, and there's scissors. There's these scissors for it too, scissor springs. So those will look, they'll all look really nice on there. It's just small little detail. Again, I think if you use these plastic um, covers, I think they'd look just fine as well. They're just a, they're slightly thicker, but I've seen much, much worse. <laughs> like as far as some thick, like they'd actually be about like this thick if it was scale 1-1. One, one. Um, yeah, and then there's also doors that go on the back here, so that's my plan, is to go ahead and build those, but, um, yeah. Like I said, I thought I'd be able to paint it, but I guess not. What can you do? I'm going to go ahead and keep building, so then I'm, I can go paint it. So I got all the metal on, the landing gear and stuff like that. I think it looks pretty good, it's not the best, um, because you have to bend quite a bit of it, like these ones here in the front, they need to be curved, and they're a very weird, weirdly shaped curve, um, but it looks pretty good, and super gluing these on top did not frost the canopy, it looks like, so I'm quite happy about that, and that's been on, it's been on there for over 12 hours, so if it was going to do anything, it should have done it by now, I can actually see just slightly on this side, a little little frosting very 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 minimal so I'm very happy about that um, and then I did the cowling here and glued all of those on there and that was interesting basically all I did is I cut them out sanded down the edges um, took my exacto knife pushed it in like this and that made them nice and bowed and that um, basically was the exact curve that I needed so, I'm going to prime them now. I'm going to use this product. I found this a couple years ago. And I actually really like this stuff. This is Mr. Metal Primer. This is a Mr. Hobby product. It's not that expensive, but I don't know if you can actually buy it anymore. Like, I don't know if they they still make it. I've never seen it for sale anywhere else, except this one place where I bought it. And they had them all there, basically. They bought it out of, out, out of an estate, so... Just trying to get my brush going here. Something's kind of gluey on it. I don't know if I used crystal clear on it. It's still not working. Like it's holding its point, but not the usual way. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So it's easy stuff to clean too. I just use a bit of lacquer thinner. I've seen people shoot the stuff through an airbrush, but again, all the instructions are in Japanese, and I can't. I can't find instructions for it anywhere. And I have searched, so uh, this is basically just my own trial and error. But um, yeah, you simply just apply it onto photo etched metal, like so, and it's yeah, it's really nice stuff. Like I said, I I, I really like this. I I like to use this for like parts where I'm not using a lot of a lot of metal. If that makes any sense. Like on the Yamato, I would not use this stuff. I would probably airbrush it, but I was much, much happier using the, um, 
This thing stopped just squirming around. I'm much happier just using the um, Mr. Surfacer on that. Now this stuff will flake off. Like it, it will chip off if you you know have like the parts you paint them and then you bend them. But I have noticed personally that it's much more um, resilient. But photo etch metal is such such a fussy thing. It's one of the reasons people don't like to use it is because of the amount of work that it can require. So I don't mind it most of the time. <laughs> This time was a little different. So, there we go. That's been primed. And I think I'm going to try and glue the cowling down just with some crystal clear or something like that. Some white glue. I'm just going to glue it down there so it's stuck on there. It's secure. I can handle it when I'm um, airbrushing the, the model. Because we're going to get ready to airbrush here in, in a second. I'm really excited to finally get to do that with this kit. So... Yeah. Excitement.